Hi, this is your clinical education team, and today we're coming to you to talk about insertion of an indwelling Foley catheter, the correct way to apply it, early removal, and how to protect our patient through correct maintenance. Currently, what we're stocking in the hospital is a SureStep Foley tray system. This is a product that contains latex, and so you will need to verify your patient's allergy list prior to inserting this to make sure they don't have a latex allergy. Additionally, this is packaged with iodine, and so you would need to verify there's no iodine allergy for your patient as well. When we talk about Foley's or indwelling catheters, we wanna make sure that if at all possible, we avoid putting them in because that's the best way to protect our patient. There is a list of reasons that are acceptable for insertion of a Foley in uh, compliance with our policy here at Chris's Mother Francis. So for instance, having a patient who needs to have um, accurate I's and O's, but could possibly still avoid to a bedpan or get up to use a bathroom, that patient would not be a, a candidate for having an indwelling catheter. However, a patient who is in a critical care situation, who is receiving a multiple drugs that's causing them to offload great amounts of fluid, who needs strict O's and O's, could possibly fit that criteria for insertion. Other reasons can be patients who are at end of life for comfort care, uh, possibly with surgeries, um, oftentimes we also have Foley's place for patients who are uh, urology based. So you definitely want to check on the reason for your patient having this indwelling catheter, why they have it and verify that that reason is still valid at the time that you have your shift. And this should be verified every 12 hours when the new shift begins. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, verify the order, get our supplies together, and educate the patient on what we're about to do so that they're aware of the process. You do not have to have a consent for this process. However, it is our policy that we insert a Foley with two nurses so that we have four eyes to help maintain our sterile field. When you're getting your supplies, you may want to get um, an additional um, couple of things. For instance, if you do not typically fit into the gloves that are prepackaged in these types of items, um, you may want to grab another set of sterile gloves. Uh, typically, that's going to be size seven and a half or larger. You should only need one pair. You may want to stick an extra pair in your pocket. Also, it depends on what kind of catheter you're putting into your patient because typically what we see packaged in these are going to be just the straight tip catheters, uh, most often 14 to 16 French. However, if you're in, uh, putting a catheter into a male patient, oftentimes we're gonna use a QDA tip catheter. QDA tip catheters look a lot like the catheter that's packaged in the system. However, the tip is curved to be able to go around the prostate easier and to be more comfortable for your patient. Those are stocked in your clean supply room along with your catheter kit. And so you would need to grab that in addition to your kit. It is not part of what's packaged in there. It is packaged in two layers. So the first layer that you open up in the white is not sterile. However, the blue packaging is sterile. And so you will need to add this to your kit uh, in a sterile fashion once you get your sterile area set up. And we'll show you how to do that. So you will want to educate your patient about what's gonna be going on and get them positioned and also have your second person there at the bedside with you. Um, typically, we're gonna lay the patient pretty well flat and then help them to hold their legs up um, so that we can try and take as much pressure off their hips as possible. We also want to set up our sterile field on the bed. I know a lot of people were trained to set it up on a bedside table. However, it causes a lot of opportunity for contaminating your sterile field when you're constantly turning from one area to another. Setting up your sterile field on the bedside or on the bed is going to give you the best opportunity to not contaminate your sterile area. When you open up your kit, there's gonna be several different pieces of um, literature in there. First, you're gonna have some education that you can provide to your patient and their family, helping to explain what it is that we're gonna be doing, uh, why we're gonna be putting this in, and how we're gonna maintain it. That's something you wanna make sure to give to them to take with them. We're also gonna have directions for use, and it has every step-by-step -step piece of the process, including pictures. Uh, so if you have not put one in in a while, it's a great reference to just check the process and make sure that you don't skip any steps. Additionally, this orange sheet is gonna have your labels so that you can make sure to label your catheter. You're gonna to want to make sure and put the date and time that you entered it and your initials so that we can help track the time that it was uh, inserted. So lastly, you're gonna find a Ziploc bag. It's gonna have a great big piece of paper on there that says stop, cleanse the periurethral area first, and it's gonna have a couple different pieces of equipment in there. The first thing you're gonna find is some hand sanitizer, and you're also gonna find some Castile towels. 
So you're going to want to go ahead and put on some gloves. 